that they had given everybody in the church, the choir, a microphone. And, um, and so everybody would have one. That didn't mean they turned them all on all the time for everybody. And, and, and the preacher said if he had one, he would always, every once in a while, say amen in it to make sure his mic was on. And, and I just, I, that came back to me that Richard had to make sure his mic's on, you know. And, and uh, so, so that's good. And, and I listened to Hubert do the Hallelujah course. And when I was at Trevecca, uh, we had, it was a required course. It's not required anymore, thank the Lord. But it was called Man's Aesthetic Experience. And we called it man's prophetic, pathetic experience. It was, it was a, really a good course. It was a history of art and music, but it was required at that time. And the professor, I mean, she tried her best, but she was very boring. And that's when we had spring quarters instead of semesters like they do now. And I took that course during the spring quarter. And it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And it was about an hour and a half course. And where we sat in the fine arts building, you could look out the window and see the beautiful green grass and all the nice sun, and you did not want to concentrate on any art or music. Uh, But I got through that class somehow. And one thing that we were required to do when we did the study in history of music, to go to some type of recital or or something, and do a report on it. And uh, for some reason, I guess it was around Easter, that uh, there was a church or a place that did Handel's Messiah. I remember that. And I thought, well, I'm just going to go do this because I've got to get a grade for it. And, but I really enjoyed it, you know, and, and I had to write a report about it. And I remember, uh, I think it's tradition, we didn't do it, but anytime you hear the Hallelujah Chorus, that you're supposed to stand. For it. And none of us did, but uh, I guess we're kind of tired, you know. <laughs> but uh, but it, I, I like that. I, I really do. When especially when a mass choir uh, ends that Hallelujah chorus, and you have the men and the ladies doing their parts and stuff, it, it just mm, it kind of gets you going just a little bit. I just want to give you some scripture to leave with you tonight. It's scripture that you have. Uh, you probably could memorize it from when you were a kid, and you probably could quote it. Now, you may not quote it the way that we learned it back in those days, because now we have so many versions of the Bible and translations, paraphrases, and all these kind of things. But uh, it's in Proverbs chapter 3, and it's two verses, verses 5 and 6, and, and I know you could quote it, but I, I just want to walk through them real quickly. Uh, I feel like uh, I thought, well, you know, I could do something for Palm Sunday, but I thought, you know, Jeffrey just wanted to handle that real well. I, you know, I didn't really need to do anything with, with Palm Sunday. But, but I thought that this would help us, I think, through the week. Uh, it's scripture we've read many times. But it is scripture that has uh, come alive to me probably in the last few years. More so. I preached on it many times, and I understand it, but it seemed like God opened my eyes even in a different way to it. And I may not be able to explain the difference. That I just, it's deeper in my heart. But it says, trust the Lord with all your heart. First, it says, trust in the Lord. And you know what trust is. Your belief in something. And we trust in a lot of things. And they fail us. We do know that we cannot trust in government. We cannot trust even in our workplace. And if you're still working and and not retired, you can't always trust to get a check at the end of the week. You know, they could be a pink slip or tell you we can't pay you, which has happened to a lot of people. And they just shut down the place. Some people have gone to work one day and found out they don't have no job because they've shut the place down. A place where they had planned and they were hoping and trusting to put bread on the table and no longer it's there. And you can't trust in money. A lot of people do. They love it and they want all they can get. 
but you can't take it with you. It may be like the lady who, whose husband, you know, he kept all the money in the house and kept it in the bed, and, and he told her she, he was about ready to die. I said, honey, you know, we never had a checking account, anything, and I don't want my money to be put in the bank. I want you to bury my money with me. She said, okay. He passed on. She gathered all the money together and went to the bank and opened up a checking account, and she wrote one check. On that right then, the full amount of money that she put in the bank and she put in her husband's casket. So it was buried with him. Because that check would never be cashed. No. But some people just uh, love money. They trust it. they got to have it. They can't live unless they got money. And there's nothing wrong with money because the scripture didn't say money was the root of all evil. It said the love of money was the root. Of all evil. And there's nothing wrong with a man having money, but when the money's got the man, then there's trouble. So we, we can't trust in these things of life. We really don't know what tomorrow holds. I have plans for tomorrow. You have plans for tomorrow. But they we may not even wake up tomorrow. So what all is there that we can trust that will never fail us? It's the Lord. And then he said, with all of our heart. Now, of course, the scripture does say, you know, in mind and soul, you know, and serve the Lord and stuff. But this thing of knowing Jesus has got to become a heart thing. There, there are people today that have knowledge. They can tell you everything about the Bible. They can tell you about the Old Testament and all the stories because they've heard them. They know all about the miracles of Jesus. They can tell you about the birth and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they can tell you, yeah, he's coming again. But it's all up here. For some reason, it hadn't gotten down here to the heart. And, and, and Paul was talking about that I may know him. Not know about him, that I can know him. And that means with all my heart that I trust him. That's pretty good stuff. That's pretty good stuff. <laughs> you don't know why I did that to her, but she, you know. But I did. And then it says, and lean not on your own understanding. I'm pretty sure, um, I won't ask tonight, and, and don't raise your hand if you do feel like that you know everything. <laughs> I don't know everything. I'm teachable. Uh, I found out the people who think they know everything don't know much. Uh, don't lean on my understanding. You know, there are times I tell God, you know, if you'll do it this way, it would really be nice. And sometimes God won't do that. And I'm kind of glad he didn't. Because he knew what was bad. I had a lady in one of my churches one time. We were talking about Thanksgiving and things that we were thankful for. She said, you know, preacher, I'm thankful for unanswered prayers. I said, well, elaborate just a minute on that. I knew where she was going. She said, there are things I prayed before I should have never prayed. And I'm glad God did not answer those. You know, Because we, we think we see the whole picture, but God sees the picture. He, he sees not just today, but he sees tomorrow. And we can't do it on our own. I, I can't be a Christian by myself. As Jeffrey was talking, we need Christ to, to walk with us and to lead and to guide us. And then he gives us that joy. And that joy is unspeakable and it's full of glory. Amen. Yes. Lean on to my own understanding. And then it says, in all thy ways, the way you walk, the way you act, the things you do, the places at work, at home, the gross, all your ways, acknowledge him. Not just on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night, but all the time. Acknowledge him. And he'll direct your path. Do you want God to be in your path? Do you want God to lead? Acknowledge him. Give praise to him. Whether it may be at the restaurant with your waiter or waitress, or whether it may be at the doctor's office, 
Doctors one day may learn one day when they walk in the office with me and say, well, Mr. Dunn, you're doing good. I say, well, I'm glad and to God be the glory or something like that or praise the Lord. And they tell them just kind of look at me, you know. But, but then I tell them, Doc, I appreciate all the work you've done and God's helped you. But, but above all, God's done the work. And I've got some doctors that, that know that. And, I mean, it's not just everything medical with them. They believe that there is a higher power than just them. But if we acknowledge him and let him be Lord, he'll direct our paths where we need to go. He'll put us where we need to be and the time we need to be there. I was reading the other day and of some friends of mine that are going to missions, and they're, they're going to China. They can say that, but they, um, they're really going to students. But, um, and you might pray for them, Chris and Shelly uh, Cotton. And Shelly used to be a cook. Shelly cooked, and she's the craziest thing in the world. And, uh, but they're going over there, and they've got two little boys, and that's their assignment, and they're going as students. And they can, if somebody asks them, if they're a Christian, they can tell them they're a Christian. But they had put on their card uh, a saying from the book of Esther. And I had read that recently, too. But for as such a time as this, and, and the way it was phrased at first, that God put you in a position for such a time as this. And God does that to us. He may put you at the grocery store just at the right time. Because somebody... Might need you. You may not know who they are, but they might need you. Brother Lindsay, who pastored in Sandersville for 47 years, the Nazarene Church, and started it there. There would be times the Lord would tell him to go somewhere, and he would show up, and people would be picking up the phone, getting ready to call him. But he would be there. He knew where to go. Why was that? Because he always served the Lord and acknowledged him. And God directed his path. And what it all comes down to is that first word we read tonight. It's trust. Trust. And who do you trust tonight? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. We're going to sing in closing in just a minute the hymn. We're going to sing a verse and a chorus of it. It's just so sweet to trust in Jesus. We're going to pray, and then we're going to sing together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you tonight. Thank you for this time together. And we pray and thank you for every song and every testimony. It has lifted our spirits. And we thank you for what you're doing in the lives of your people. Now, Lord, as we enter this holy week, and we're part of it, that, Lord, that we will take note of what you have done for us. And, Lord, that, that we will not to celebrate Easter just one time a year, but we will do it all the time, every day, because we do serve a risen Savior. And, Lord, when we come Friday, it's going to be a little different because it will be Good Friday, and then Sunday, though, we're going to come and worship and celebrate that we do serve a risen Savior. And we're glad tonight that we can just trust in you. It sounds so simple sometimes, Lord, but help us to do it, just to trust in you and believe in you. I pray, Lord, it be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. And after